hi guys welcome back to my channel i'm juliana and today yes we are in the time of year where i will share with you my plans for next year 2024 and i will share with you my 12 books for 2024 of course no i haven't finished my challenge for 23 hopefully i will be able to post the videos january the books that i'm uh, left to finish and to post a video a review video uh, about but let's hope that in january i will be able to bring them to the channel but today Yes, I like this challenge, I like to do these videos, so I'm going to keep trying <laughs> to do this challenge every year and, well, in the best result possible, I will be able to complete it in the year that I was supposed to complete it, but just let's hope for that. So, I have 11 physical books to show you. I'm, uh, I don't have one of them in, in a physical format, but I will show you the cover. Well, I wanted to film this in December, so if you want to join me reading these books, you have a bit of time to maybe buy the book whatever in physical or ebook so you can it's not a joint reading of course but you know this is my wish it, it would be that you will read the book each month and then come to my channel to watch the review video and leave comments like what you thought if you agree with my point of view or not so you know that's my wish but of course you are free to do whatever <laughs> but so let's begin with january so in january i'm planning to read half lives the unlike history of radium by lucy jane santush so this is about uh, as you can see this has here marie curie in the cover I can read you some blurbs. So, there was a time when radioactivity seemed to promise the future. It was the stuff that 20th century dreams were made of. Before those dreams turned sour. This marvelous book explores the ways radioactivity stood for a better future, work its way into money-making schemes of all kinds and offered hope to saints and charlatans. By doing all that, and doing it so well, it also offers a cautionary tale about the dangers of putting too much faith in simple technological solutions to all our problems. This is by Professor Ian Rice Moros. So, this has a lot of blurbs, but I think this one is the best one, at least in my opinion. My urge to buy this book came because originally I wanted to buy Madame Curie by Eve, Eva or Eve, Eve Curie, so the daughter of Marie Curie. Well, the daughter wrote that book in a, a like biography about her mother, the life of her mother, and I'm really curious to read that book. Just it came out in Portugal. I don't know if it was... when it was? When was it? Now I don't really remember, but I know that I've seen the, the publisher pu publicitizing the, the book and I was very excited, but I never came around to buy it. So I saw this one and it, this was in a good price, so I bought it. So I'm going to start with this one, but the idea is later to read Madame Curie. So yeah, 
January. In February, I'm going to read The English Patient by Michael O. G. I don't know how well to say it, I'm sorry. So this is a Portuguese edition. I'm going to leave... So where will I put it? Maybe in here. <laughs> I'm going to leave here the cover in English. I have seen the movie. I think this is from 96, the movie. And with Juliette Pinoche and this actor that I don't remember the name. This is the protagonist. This is the English patient. So this is passing during the Second World War in Tuscan, in a monastery in ruins. And an enigmatic man wounded is attended by a young nurse. His body is completely burned, but he fights still to dedicate his last breath to tell the his story as beautiful and as tragic. So the main story or the main plot is around what I said. I love the movie, that's why I wanted to read the book. Uh, and I thought for February this would be a good choice. Uh, I never read anything from this author, so let's see how it goes. Then in March, I'm going to read Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Um, for I don't know very much about it. Well, so let's see. Humbert Humbert is a professor, a middle aged professor, and Lolita, the daughter of his, of his landlord, is a young lady with 12 years old, disturbed. Disturbably beautiful and provocative. With these elements, it was constructed, constructed the history of the love obsession, mo the most fa famous love obsession of the 20th century. Okay, so from what I have seen and I have heard, this is kind of a limbo in pedophilia. How I don't know how how forward this book goes, but everyone that I heard talking about it say that this is really interesting, although in some ways a little heavy. But I had so much curiosity to read this novel and this story. And I have other books by Nabokov that I'm, that I, well, some of it I read a part of, that was lectures on Russian literature, that's one of them, where I, I went to read about Anna Karenina, or Anna Karenina, and then the other one is... Okay, lecture on literature. So, um, these, book, these two books, lect lectures on Russian lit literature and lectures on literature, literature uh, are non-fiction. So, they are, as the title says, say, lectures. And I'm really interested in those as well. But I'm supposing that those two books are more for consult, consultate, I mean, um, and not so much to read from beginning to end in a single way, you know, but I'm re very interested in reading, in reading those as well. So, Lolita in March, then in April, we have Gone, A Girl, A Violin, A Life, uns Unstrung by Min Kim. So this is a memoir book, uh, autobiographical. Uh, Min Kim is a violinist. She plays the, the violin since she was six years old. 
she she was born in South Korea but she was raised in the UK and at seven she was accepted as the youngest ever pupil at the Purcell School of Music. And I won't say more because well I want to keep it for the review video but it's not like I know much more <laughs> I know because I'm reading about it but um, I heard about this when I think in um, in a booktube video in a booktube channel and from what I heard I was very interested and very keen on knowing more and I think I read few memoirs and so on and I like non-fiction so I found it interesting so that's why it's here okay then in May I w I'm going to read Why Read the Classics by Italo Calvino so this is a Portuguese edition I'm going to leave the cover here this is also non-fiction I heard so, m so many people talking about this one and since the beginning I was very curious about it so this is like essays that go for the highest points of literature and world, world thought the Odyssey, Ovid, Galileo, Galileo, Robinson Crusoe the Candid, Diderot, Stendhal, Balzac, Dickens, Flaubert, Tolstoy, Henry James, Robert Louis Stevenson, Conrad, Hemingway, Borges, and a lot of other authors and works that are definitely classics. So the I think that the concept of this book, what is a classic and why to read them, it's very interesting to me because what does it make a work to be known or be classified as a classic and why it's important or is recommended for us to read those specific books so all of these questions are very interesting to me and that's why I wanted to dive in in this one so in June I'm going to read Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. So this is a classic. <laughs> uh, so uh, I will be following on why I think I mentioned him, right? Flaubert. Yes. So I'm going to read the point of view of Italo Calvino about maybe this um, novel in particular who knows but i i had so much curiosity about this one as well i heard many things about it and you know i like classics and i think if are if there exists works that are references and that are recommended by intellectuals that mention these works as classics and how it's important for us to read them I think it's a good maneuver to read those ones so what does it say in the back? Emma Bo Bo Bovary pursues the image of the world that is given to her by a certain disconnected from reality literature Dragged by her illusions, the woman of the prosaic medic Charles Bovary imagines herself a great lover, or a great, a great lover, I think that's the meaning. But the reality reveals itself as merciless. So, I don't know much about it. I know it's a classic, that's why I know this title because I hear so many people talking about it and or at least referencing this work as a classic and yeah that's why it's here and is in, in the following of why read the classic so I think that's you know a good follow-up don't you 
next up in July this is more of um, light reading I'm supposing I'm going to read Under a Dancing Star by La Laura Wood uh, I think this is middle middle grade how middle grade I think that's how you say it or young adult or I don't know how well the classification or for which type of public this book is regarded as but uh, for what I heard about it this is a more cozy reading a more light reading and with a embellished and beautiful story around it and I think this is passing in summertime so that's why I wanted to read during that season uh, so I'm really excited so this is 1930 England B's parents want her married off to keep the family state alive but she longs for adventure a golden summer in Italy with her bohemian uncle opens up a whole world which includes Ben a handsome, handsome infuriating artist Sparks fly between the quick-witted pair until one night under the stars a challenge is set. Can they put aside their teasing and have the perfect summer romance? There, I there is only one rule. They absolutely must not fall in love. Okay. And don't you think the cover is beautiful as well? So yeah, I think this is a cozy romance and I heard many good things so that's why it's in July for a more seasonal reading, you know. Then in August I'm going to read Bloom by Kevin Panetta and the illustrations of Savana Ganushian or Ganushu, I think. Let me just... Eh. So this is a graphic novel. Let me see what I can show you. So, as you can see... And this is a, a Spanish edition. We have here in Portugal already a Portuguese edition, but I bought this before the Portuguese edition came out in Portugal because I was eager to read it but then I never came around it so you know the drill but well here it is this is for August I wanted to you know in the summertime at least here in Portugal is summer um, in the peak of summer I wanted a more light reading a more fun reading so why not to put a graphic novel on it you know so i think this is about two teenagers that fall in love so two boys well maybe not teenagers young adults so it he one of them um, finishes high school or something and is ready to begin his life move to the great the big city and triumph in his ultra cool band <laughs> but he has to convince his father and then he meets Hector and you know the rest is history so there's chemistry between these two characters I think I'm supposing are these ones in the cover and you know a romance story a fun story so August Then, in September, I'm going to read Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke. So, as you can see, this is a Portuguese edition. I was very eager to pick up this book. I wanted, I, well, I thought first to read in English, but I had an experience of reading Philip K. Dick in English, and that wasn't easy at all. So I thought that Arthur C. Clarke wouldn't be easy as well. So that's why I go went to the route to read in Portuguese or to buy the book in Portuguese. 
um, but I'm going to leave the cover. And this is science fiction. So what says in a bag? During the years of the Cold War, a technological superior race comes down from the skies to rule the Earth. Contrary to what we could imagine, the invaders show themselves benevolent and lead the planet to a period of prosperity never seen before. Where, they, where it stops to exist violence, hunger and disease. With few spots of resistance, mankind renders itself to the invasor. But the, the Lord Supremes have, the, have rules. So he's not allowed to no one to meet them. And the space exploration is terminantly prohibited to men. So between surprising revelations and the somber shadow that assombers the human hearts, the real purpor purpose of the new leaders will stand in a shadow for 200 years until humanity be ready, is until the mission be fulfilled until the human race knows the destiny that was laid out. Isn't this intriguing? Aren't you curious to know the story and to know the the end of the story, of this story in particular? I mean, wow, when I first heard about the plot and the premise of this book, I was I was sold. And because, well, I'm a suspect because I love science fiction and I want to read more science fiction in the future. But yeah, I'm very excited for this one. So in October, that's the book I don't have in a physical form or I don't, I don't have in any form actually uh, because I haven't bought it yet. But in October, I'm going to read The King in Yellow by Robert W. Chambers. So this is my pick for the horror month. Um, and again, I think this is considered a classic or at least a very popular, popular, yeah, I suppose it is, or well-known at least um, book uh, about horror or in the horror genre. This is a collection of stories. As I have said before, I'm not sure, I'm still pondering, I'm still trying it out because I'm forming the opinion, not opinion, the conclusion that perhaps I'm not a short story person. I thought I was, <laughs> but for a few experiences that I have in the last few months. They didn't went so well. I, I end up the book in a um, not so favorable classification, like in stars or in my general feeling about the book. So, well, let's see how this goes. Perhaps this will be different. I don't know. So let's see. Then in November, I'm going to read The Tartar's Tip by Dino Puzzati. So I'm, I'm thinking, now I'm not sure, but I think this is considered a classic as well. So this is a powerful story and to, till a certain point ironic of a, a company in a military post, a border military post, that is preparing in the expectation of fighting an enemy that never arrives, but incapable of advancing or back off. Yeah, I'm. this story is also very intriguing. Along the years that, uh, or at least in these past three years, that I've been more connected with reading and more and my do do and that I did research about titles and authors and so on. 
I heard many people talking about this book in particular, so for a very long time I wanted to read it, so that's why I chose it to be in my 12 books for 24. And last one, December, this is going to be a challenge for me because, and that's why I chose for it to be the last book of the year so I have time hopefully to begin I'm well I'm going to tell you my plan my plan is to start reading this book in January so you to have an idea because do you see this let me check 546 pages so this right here and I'm talking about Intellectuals and Society by Thomas Sowell, revised and enlarged edition. So this is an American, an um, American intellectual. I first heard about this author in Booktube, uh, and right away I was very interested in reading some books by this author. There is one book that I thought to buy first, but then it sold out and, well, I didn't have, I didn't come around to buy it, but I'm, it, it is in my wish list and that is Conflict, Conflict of Visions, where there he will explore I think he has two classifications for the way people lean on politically and that is a theme or a subject that really interests me but well that will be for another time but this one I talked a bit about this one in a book haul and this will be about as well the title says everything intellectuals and society so the role of intellectuals in society and how sometimes they let us down and nothing happens to them so something like that and this is a chunk of a book i'm very interested to see the thoughts and the development of thought that Tom, thomas sowell will lead on in this book so we will talk about this one in december Okay, <laughs> so we are through. The, this is my list for 24. Of course, I'm, I'm not, I can't promise that every single video will be on time to, every, to each of the books because these previous two years um, I wasn't able to deliver so I can't really make promises, so that's why it's a bit unfair for me to ask for you to come along in a reading with me when I can't promise that I will be posting a video at the end of each month for every single one of these. But, well, it doesn't hurt for you to read the book, right? So if you want to join me, please let me know, I would love to hear if you want to read, if not all, at least some of these books or which were the ones that pique your interest or poke your interest, I really love to know. I also would love to know if you have your own list for this, for the upcoming year, if you do a list at all. So let me know all about it. And I, yeah, I think that's it. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can be notified whenever I post. Leave a like, a like. it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. Oh, now I'm also on TikTok. So... If you go to, if you watch uh, till the very end of the video, in my end card, you will see 
uh, all of my so all of the names where I met on TikTok, on X, on um, Instagram. So you will see those if you want to follow me, of course. Uh, you will see those at the end, at the very, very end. So please see the video to, till the very end so you can, well, follow me on all of those platforms. I hope to see you there and bye!